Hey guys, it's Vitaly here at About Ukraine and thank you for visiting my channel About Ukraine and uh, here I'm trying to uh, cover some of the basic questions that people have about Ukraine. And uh, in this video I'm going to talk about investment. A lot of people ask about investment opportunities in Ukraine. Ukraine is like a developing country, there's like all these opportunities, so much land, there's so much people, so many natural resources, there's so much money to be made. Uh, relatively speaking, you don't really see much money being made here. In this video I'd like to cover some of the aspects of investment in Ukraine. And uh, I'm not talking about like multi-million dollar investments, but something that an average Joe can do. And in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what is the investment climate like in Ukraine. Uh, about bonds uh, one thing that you can invest in here and also how to how to do that how to actually buy government bonds here in ukraine because i think this is really the only option you guys have if you want to invest some money in ukraine so uh, what are we looking at here in ukraine well we're looking at an investment base that's really really tiny you're looking at something like 40 million people uh, a country right that creates about like as much wealth as maybe lower manhattan and that's, that's about it right uh, basically the people in ukraine aren't making that much wealth i mean how many people live in in, uh, southern Manhattan a couple of hundred thousand but you're looking at a country of 40 million and that's not a lot of money to go around so the number number one reason why Ukrainian investment climate is on the rocks is because people don't pr uh, produce that much value that you can leverage as an investor another thing is that as an investor uh, you don't really have an option safely securely and long-term park your money right um, you can't really park it anywhere uh, basically there are no mutual funds there are no pension funds you can't really park your money the way you can in countries like you know United States Canada the UK where it can gain you a good 10% return on your, on your investment here you can't really do that so there's no private equity there's no insurance there's no demand for securities either uh, internally and um, that's basically the picture that you have here in Ukraine uh, the number two thing you have to keep in mind is that there is no diverse investment base. The people that did uh, invest in Ukraine, they left at the first sign of political instability in 2014-2015. Investors left en masse. There's also some fear surrounding the National Bank of Ukraine. There was a story when the um, the head of the National Bank of Ukraine resigned. His name was Smoly, I believe. And that caused an uproar uh, in the Western world because he was uh, a very, very solid. And basically he was uh, going for like a very conservative fiscal policy and after he got resigned boom there's all this uncertainty not nobody's sure what's going to happen nobody's sure it's going to be the value of the revenue nobody's been sure what's going to happen to all these investments even the credibility of the ukrainian states put on the, on the question like nobody was sure if they if they could default on their bonds or, or what could happen so it's, it's, it's a global thing that that uh, people in ukraine have to contend with and investors in ukraine have to contend with when investing here uh, the number three thing people have to keep in mind is really instability uh in this country like anything goes you're not really sure what to expect when the next law is going to pass, who's going to be behind it, uh, what uh, consequences it can have on the financial climate in Ukraine. It's anybody's guess, really, what could happen. Uh, so you're something well, great. I understand that. I understand all these risks. And uh, I don't have a million dollars. I don't have, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. I have, like, 10 grand, maybe, I can play with that I'm willing to, like, to invest in Ukraine. What can I do? What, what options do I have? Well, many people are going to say, hey, you can invest in real estate in Ukraine. You can buy, like, a little house. You can buy an apartment. You can buy, uh, you know, uh, a, little, a little piece of, uh, even, like, uh, office space you can buy some office space uh however office space is speculative thing here because as we can all agree with what happened with the, with the recent pandemic uh the demand for real estate uh kind of dropped when it comes to commercial real estate but uh renting out to people the rental yields aren't that good here in ukraine looking at um, an investment of maybe in kiev for example an apartment would cost you uh, fifty thousand dollars for example uh and you'd be able to rent it out for maybe a few hundred dollars not more than maybe three hundred dollars right so you're looking at a really small uh, rental yield you, you may be better off and spending the same amount of money and buying like a fixer up or somewhere in the states right or somewhere in your home country uh another thing is that if you're looking outside of kiev yes prices are very attractive you're looking at like uh maybe 10 grand for an apartment or for like a, a house even further away in some village but again you look have to look at who your market is like um, reality is a lot of these small towns and villages are shrinking and people really can't just find tenants to fill in these spots so again real estate questionable thing another thing people are suggesting is maybe uh, get a little cafe open it on the corner somewhere again you have to look at the type of 
uh, purchasing power people have here. The, there's an oversaturation of cafes. You have to do your research really carefully about what you can do with cafes. Another thing people also talk about, uh, Ukraine does have a very low car ownership rate. You know, the amount of cars on the road are going up and up and up rapidly, it's true. And you can maybe take advantage of that boom by getting uh, into the car import business, bringing cars over really close from Poland. Poland has the highest car ownership, I, I believe, per capita after Switzerland and Germany. There's an over influx of cars and there is a business idea of bringing cars over into Ukraine but again I believe it's a race to the bottom because you're trying to undercut all the existing players you're trying to sell the car for the lowest amount of money here again you have to understand that the Ukrainian purchasing power is not near as much as it would be in, in somewhere in Western Europe so you have to contend with these limiting factors here in Ukraine so what options do you have you want to invest some money what are you gonna do well there's a few things that you should know about the Ukrainian economy and Ukrainian financial system in general I believe that there is only one option, and it's called OVGZ, which stands for Obligatsi Vnutrinimova Zaima Tudarstvinova, or something like that. Essentially, it means internal government bonds. For those of you that don't know, government bonds are a type of a security or a government debt that you can purchase and hold on to and then exchange later for cash at a set percent. This, this is basically a commitment from the government to you that they will pay the nominal value of the bond plus interest at a certain time at a maturity date. Uh, so the minimum value of bond that you can purchase is 1,000 hryvnias, which is just under $50. And these are issued for up to, for example, six months, which is a great short-term way to hold on your money. You get six months. You can uh, purchase a bond from one to five years, or you can purchase a bond for more than five years. So what should you know about the financial situation in Ukraine in general? Well, there's a few things that you should know about the Ukrainian economy and Ukrainian financial system in general. You have to understand that Ukraine in 2015 had a private and public debt ratio of 79% to GDP. This is a huge amount of uh, debt and lots of uh, governments essentially uh, didn't have any confidence that Ukraine will pay uh, out on their obligations. So Ukraine had to restructure the debt. It was a very big pivotal moment for Ukraine. In 2016, Ukraine requested and got a standby loan of $17.6 billion from the International Monetary Fund. Uh, it was not only the International Monetary Fund, it was also the US, EU, various private donors, private equity funds, and that kind of, all these kinds of institutions, essentially. So in terms of the bond market, the next few years saw like a really, really fragmented bond market. Regulators and investors were kept in the dark about the real situation of the bond market, and that led to something like 75% of bonds being issued within the same maturity date. So basically, it was unrealistic for anybody to invest into these bonds. So after this huge debacle and huge mess, it took another year for their government and regulators to restructure the auction mechanism so that an actual auction could take place. That kind of streamlined the whole process and made it easier for investors to invest into in the bond market. So the good thing is that in over three months, uh, the amount traded went from zero to $3.2 million US. And that is quite a quite a, lot, a big jump from zero, I would say. Today, the dollar amount that's been traded is about 700 million US dollars. And that kind of reached the ceiling because of, I mean, there's only so many investors that are going to go into a market that has BBB rating by Moody and Standard & Poor's. So basically, you, don't, you have a ceiling of uh, what kind of people can come in and invest in here. But at the same time, you have a lot of powerful also investors, which is Ukrainian banking system. If you were to divide up the share of investors, uh, you would look in at 12% that are speculators, are foreign speculators, and 75% are banks. Ukrainian banks, they actually see better returns here than they do just uh, investing depositors' money, which is a, says quite a lot about how confident the Ukrainian banking system is in the government. So, how does the Ukrainian internal bond market make sense for foreigners to invest in? So, the number one reason is the Ukrainian currency goes up and down, up and down relative to the US dollar. And what that means is that the liquidity is high, you can uh, hold it for six months and then later on resell it on the agreed amount and get your money easily very easily you can resell it to any ukrainian bank and the bank will purchase it and give you cash in exchange the second reason is the cost of borrowing in ukraine is really really high it's not like in the west where you can like a one percent mortgage for a house you're looking for a 35 percent mortgage that is like a three percent monthly interest rate and that's basically what banks are giving out left and right so what's the good thing about the Overgaza market? You're essentially borrowing money from the most stable borrower essentially in Ukraine, the government. Uh, you're not borrowing from the bank, you're borrowing from directly from the government. And what that means is that means that if the bank happens to go under, if the bank can't pay back your money, your money isn't with the bank, it's with the government. 
that's another thing you have to keep in mind. Number three thing you have to keep in mind is that your gains is not subject to Ukrainian tax. If you put money to the deposit, you're looking at an 8% tax on your deposit, on your interest. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that Ukraine is at war and uh, with your deposit, a certain amount of, of money in terms of tax, taxes collected will go to help the war effort. With, uh, with the bond market, you're exempt from all these taxes. You may ask, what's the point uh, for the bank even to um, have deposits? If the banks make more money off the bond market, why do they even offer deposits for, for people? Well, the thing is that's what they do. They offer deposits and and they um, you know, promote deposits, they tell people about them, but the bond market, uh, you know, they keep it hush-hush. They don't tell anybody about it simply because they don't make money off it. Uh, what they do is they, they take the 10% to 11% that they make off the bond market, and then they make 8% of the depositors. And what they do, they live off the remainder, I don't know, 2%, 4%, they make, live off the remainder. That's essentially their income. You say, hey, sign me up for this 10%. I live in Ukraine. I want to park my money into the bond market. What do I do? Well, you can just call up your bank. Any bank in Ukraine will essentially offer to buy bonds on your behalf. And to do that, you need to open up an account with them. And to service that account, it's not much money. I believe it's about 100 to 200 revenues a month that you have to pay. But it's chump change if you're actively going on to the auction. They charge a tiny, tiny fee for the, for the auction fee, which is like 0.01% or something like that. Uh, it's a fraction of a percent. So you probably won't even notice it. And all you have to do essentially is contact your bank, whether it's a private bank, OTP bank, Oshad bank, Alpha bank, uh, Pum, and um, Rafizen, and uh, Ukrasi bank, essentially any of these major banks. If, if you call up your bank, you will likely be able to reach an appropriate representative who deals with uh, these bonds and who can uh, help point you in the right direction. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that you're going to have to have proof of where you got the money. If you'd like to use more than $14,000, you're going to have to provide proof of where you got the money, the origin of the money. But if it's under $14,000, you're okay. You don't really have to do it. The reality is the majority of investors that deal with uh, this market, they invest in quite a lot, large sums of money. And then, the, and then they, they calculate the, the, the amount of years that they have to hold on to it to get the, the optimal yield and that kind of thing. So uh, you just keep in mind that you, you don't have to worry about declaring your money or, or uh, communicating the origin of that money. So there you have it. I hope this uh, video was helpful to you guys. And if you guys live in Ukraine, I hope you guys got an understanding of where you can park the money. Like I said, this is my, this is what I would advise you to do. This is what I would do if I was in, in, in your position. And um, I hope you guys like my content and hit like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you think about the internal bond market. Let me know what you think about investment in Ukraine in general. And you can always uh, support me on Patreon and support me on PayPal if you'd like to make a one-time donation to support my channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time.